Have you ever pondered the mechanics behind an oil catch can? What is it? Does my engine need one? Well, get ready to dive into the world of automotive engineering and unravel this mystery. After briefly explaining what an oil catch can is and how it works, we will show you how to install it on a 2014 to 2023 Chevy Silverado with the 4.3 liter V6 engine. First, it's crucial to understand the role of an oil catch can. It's an inexpensive yet ingenious device that traps oil vapors from the engine's crankcase. These vapors are caused by engine blow-by and naturally become greater as an engine wears and ages. If left unchecked, these vapors can cause carbon buildup in the intake manifold and on the valves and reduce the engine's performance over time. So, how does this magical device work? The journey begins at the positive crankcase vent, PCV for short, which directs the vapors toward the oil catch can. Inside this can, a baffling system awaits. This isn't just a random maze, it's a meticulously designed pathway that forces the oil vapors to change direction multiple times. As the vapors navigate this labyrinth, the oil particles collide with the baffles and each other, causing them to condense and form droplets. These droplets, heavier than the air, then fall to the bottom of the can, while the lighter, cleaner air continues its journey toward the intake manifold. The following installation video will use a simple, inexpensive Evil Energy Oil Separator Catch Can. This can is adequate for all naturally aspirated Chevy engines. We will include a link in the video description below. Now, you might be wondering what happens to the oil collected at the bottom of the can. It's simple. It's periodically drained or dumped out. At the end of this video, we will show you what we collect after driving for some time, so don't click away too soon. Generally, it should be emptied at each fuel fill-up until you know how much it's collecting. Now that you know what an oil catch can is, we will show you how to install one on our 2018 Chevy Silverado. First thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and get this out of the kit. Make sure everything is there. You've got the two hoses, you've got the quick connect fittings, and you've got the bracket. This bracket is for 2014 to 2018. If you've got a 2019 to 2022, probably the 23s also, there will be a little bit different bracket here. The PCV valve was not available in a lot of my local parts stores. So if you're looking for this, you may want to check out the links below. Very cheap insurance just to go ahead and get that replaced when you do this. The tools you're gonna need, a 15 16 wrench. I recommend a deep well 15 16 socket, a ratchet, half inch, three eighths, doesn't matter as long as you have a 15 16 socket. You're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket for that bolt on the bracket there for the firewall bracket. Pliers and a screwdriver may come in handy, but not really required. Impact definitely not required, but just speeds it up a little bit. First thing I'd recommend you do here is go ahead and remove your oil fill cap. Pull this little plastic valve cover off of there really not much holding those on there just to get that out of your way once you get that plastic valve cover off just go ahead and put this back on just so we don't drop something down in there then you're going to come back here and this tube here runs from your intake manifold down to your driver's side valve cover and then what you do here is just push this in and then that will pull right off of there it can be kind of hard to push that but it does just pull right off of this pcv valve and then come up here same way on this one Push this tab in, and then that'll pull right off. Once you get this off, we will not need this for the new oil catch can going back on here. That's just an extra part at this point. So you've got this exposed here. We're going to go ahead and take our 15 16 deep well socket right here and take this PCV valve out. Go ahead and get our new one in there. You can get a 15 16 wrench on the side there too, or maybe even a pair of channel locks. I just think a socket deep well is going to be easier. Just come in here on top like that. And we should be able to turn that right out. Make sure there's no dirt around this that could fall down in your valve cover. Pull that out of there. You can kind of see there this one was still working, but I just feel better replacing it anyway. Then I just took a little bit of oil and oiled this up a little bit just to make that easier to screw back down in there. We'll take that green cap off here in just a minute. Go ahead and take your 15 16 socket again. And you just barely want to snug this down. This doesn't need to be tight at all. When you feel it bottom out, maybe go another quarter or half turn past where it hits bottom. All right, I just felt it hit bottom there. So I'll come around, turn that maybe a quarter turn. Got an O-ring on it, so it'll seal pretty easily. You don't have to do a lot of tightening on that. 
All right, we'll go ahead and pull this green cap off here now. And our oil separator will connect right on there and right on there. Next thing you'll want to do is look at your catch can here and see which hose is your in and which hose is your out. Your in connects to that PCV valve we just put in the valve cover and your out connects to your connection on the intake manifold. We're going to take this bolt right here out, 13 millimeter. Go ahead and back this out. We're going to use the same bolt to put it back in. Take that out, put this bolt right down through that. Now I did sandwich this between the bracket and the frame of the car. You can put it on top or whatever, it doesn't matter. I just think it gives it a little bit more support, makes it just a little bit lower. Go ahead and tighten that down. I like to put this over here where you can reach it from the driver's fender so you can easily take this can off. And this is how you check to see how much oil and water you're collecting in this thing. I'd say when you first put it on, check it every two to 400 miles. It's obviously clean at this point. I just wanted to make sure before we put it all together here. This one is one of the less expensive ones. It does not have a drain on the bottom of it, so you have to pull it off each time you want to empty it. And then you just put that back on once you clean it out. Make sure when you hook this up, we know this is the out, so this hose here is the in coming from the back side of this canister. And then just pull this down here, route this down here, and it should just clip right on there. And then this just pushes right on to that PCV valve. And make sure that clips in place really tight. Next, take the hose coming from your out, connect it to your intake manifold. Just push that right down on there until it clicks. And buddy, that's about all there is to this. You could literally probably do this in less than five to 10 minutes. The only other thing you need to do here is go ahead and take your oil fill cap back off. We'll slide this valve cover right back on here. Put your oil cap back on and you are done. All right, before I finish this video, I'll show you another 500, maybe 1,000 miles, just depending on when I get back to this. But right now we're at 106,218 miles, 3,362 hours on the engine. I'll try to do this when it gets to 500, maybe 1,000 miles, just depends on when I get back to this video. But I'll show you exactly how much we collect in that canister and how many miles I've got on the truck at that point. Three days later. All right, so it's been a little bit more than three days. Uh, currently, I've added about 20, actually 20.2 20 hours to the engine hours and right around 450, I think five, 455 miles if I'm doing my math correct there. It is currently four degrees outside in my location. It was down to zero this morning. So it is extremely cold right now. A lot of snow on the ground. Being really cold like this can't affect how much oil and water we're gonna condense in that catch can. So we'll pull it out here, take it in the garage, and I'll show you exactly what I've got here. All right, when you pull this off, just make sure you keep it straight up and down so you don't spill anything. Boy, it is too cold out here for this stuff. I think you owe me a like and subscribe for this one. Make sure you don't drop it. Quite a bit here. I'll dump it out here in the garage and show you more about what I got here. All right, I got all the heat going out here in the garage today and it's still only 55 degrees in the garage. And that's with two heaters going there, the mini split going up there, and I just turned that electric heater off because it's loud trying to do video. So it's cold out. What I did is I took a water bottle and cut it in half and I'm just gonna go ahead and dump this in the bottom of this water bottle so I can see this separate because this looks like a mixture of oil and water at this point. So I'll just dump this in here. Well, there's some sludge in there too. Be interesting to let that sit and settle and then we'll see what we get out of this thing. That would have all went down into your intake manifold. And on this truck, it has been going into the intake manifold for 100,000 miles, a little over 100,000 miles. So let's let this separate and see what we come up with here. One thing I wish I could show you better was the smell of this stuff. It is extremely pungent. It has a really strong, 
almost like a burnt oil, maybe even a fuel or gas smell to it, more of an oil smell than gas, but I'll leave that set there and then I'll come back here and show you what this looks like after it's separated out. While well, I was waiting for this to separate and see what happens here, I did look this up. I think I will go ahead and order one of these EZ106 14 millimeter drain valves. You can drill this out and tap it and that way you don't have to sit out there in a cold weather like this, unscrew this, dump it out, clean it out, and then put it back on. Put a drain valve on it. It'll be real easy to just open it up, catch it in a cut off water bottle or something and then dump it out that way so you don't have to physically remove this every time. From what I see here, the amount this collected, I think I'm gonna have to do this at least every five to 600 miles. So about once every tank of fuel should be more than enough to make sure that this never gets full. Cause once this gets full, it's just gonna start sucking that right back in your intake again. All right, so it's been sitting here for about an hour now. Put a light on it here, I'll show you. Oil floats on water. So if you look at the bottom of this, I'd say that's about 60 to 70 percent water. What I'll do, I put a piece of cardboard down here with a shop rag and some paper towels. I'll go ahead and dump this out. You can see what we've got here. Ah. All right, so if we let this suck down through the normal PCV valve the way it does, this is what would cause all the carbon buildup and stuff inside your engine. So anyway, guys, if you found any value in this video, consider checking out this one right here. I'll post another video. I've got a few more videos on this truck. Thanks for watching. Until next time. And guys, if you're interested in one of these, this is not a paid endorsement. This was not a free product. I bought this with my own money, but I do make a commission. So if you're interested in buying one of these, check the links out down below the video.